All right. Consideration of an ordinance establishing Chapter 31 of the Lake County Code for an edible food recovery program. And this is Lars Ewing, Public Services Director. Go ahead, Lars. Okay. Good afternoon, uh, Chairman Crandall and the board. I, I very much appreciate you taking this up. Um, before you right now, last year, the uh, staff presented uh, to the board a summary of the regulations for SB 1383, uh, which is the state's short-lived climate pollutant reduction strategy. The, the program from the state is intended to reduce organic, organic waste going to landfills. Last year, your board took action to approve a rural jurisdiction waiver, which exempts the county from certain requirements of the regulations. Uh, however, those regulations st still require the county, along with every other jurisdiction in the state, to establish an edible food recovery program. Uh, these programs, these edible food recovery programs, require those jurisdictions to take a number of actions. Uh, there are five of them, and I'll list them. First is to identify a commercial, uh, not a, but excuse me, identify commercial edible food generators that must comply with the regulations. And number two, I, uh, educate those same food generators of the requirements to establish food donation agreements with food recovery organizations. Those items are complete. Uh, there are two other items that are in progress. One is to monitor compliance, and the fourth is to assess the county's overall food recovery capacity and plan for additional capacity if it is determined to be insufficient. So these are in progress. Uh, the fifth is what we're considering today is to establish an enforcement mechanism. The fifth requirement is that the jurisdictions establish an enforcement mechanism for the food generators that are subject to the regulations. Uh, so to plan for the county's program, public services brought together representatives from uh, various local jurisdictions, well, all those local jurisdictions, uh, that includes environmental health department, social services, and the two cities. Uh, we brought together food donors, uh, uh, specifically grocery stores, as well as food recovery organizations, uh, Redwood Empire Food Bank, and Lake County Gleaners, as well as other associated organizations, senior centers, and free kitchens. Uh, so th that, uh, that committee, ad hoc committee, um, uh, pr provided some input to staff and the, the draft ordinance that is required by state law that is in front of you, what does it do? That's the, the, the question at hand. Uh, it requires food generators, which means grocery stores and supermarkets, to enter into a contract with a food recovery organization. Um, it requires inspections, record keeping, and reporting. The inspections would be accomplished by environmental health department, the food generators, and the food service organizations would uh, perform record keeping. Public services department would provide the, re the reporting to the state, excuse me. Uh, it also includes penalties for non-compliance. Uh, the penalties for non-compliance is for the food generators, not for the food recovery organizations. That's important to note. So in the ordinance, the uh, now through January 2024 is a ramp up period. There are no, there are no uh, fines or penalties associated with that time frame. After 2024, January 1st, is when the administrative fines would begin. Um, also important to note is that this is a program uh, that, that's already in use. The, 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 the grocery stores are already working with the, the, the food recovery organizations, are already providing that. So what this is intended to do is to, uh, is to, to put, some, uh, put some teeth to it uh, and, uh, and ramp it up with the intent to reduce the, the, the food waste going to landfills. Uh, so uh, the recommended action that I'll summarize here is that if your board wishes to approve the ordinance, uh, staff recommends that you offer the ordinance and have it read in title only and motion to advance the second reading of the ordinance to the May 17th Board of Supervisors meeting. Um, I will also note that there is one minor edit to the, uh, to the ordinance on page two, the very bottom of page two uh, in section 3.3. It says, uh, quote, division uh, XXX. That should say chapter. Uh, and that is all I have to add to the, to the edits. So happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Lars. Any questions? Supervisor Sabatier? More of just a, a quick comment. Um, I'm hoping that we can get a review on how this is working for us, maybe in a year, uh, just because I want to make sure we have some homeless shelters, we have our senior centers. I want to make sure they're getting their fair share of these things, just because I know that they're all struggling to keep up with the demand uh, for the services that they offer. And so I don't want to add anything to it, but I definitely want to pay attention to how our critical infrastructure uh, to help and serve the people that are vulnerable are gaining from this. Uh, so if that's possible within a year to review that, that'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. We, we are required to, re um, the county is required to provide a report to the state here in a couple of months. And then after that, it's, it's annually. So at that annual uh, report would be a, an opportunity time to do that. 
Vice Chair Scott. And, and I know on that note, Elijah House doesn't get food directly, but they get food from the gleaners. Yes. So the food is being um, distributed to our, our centers that are serving the homeless. So I do have a question for Anita, because she shook her head when it, uh, Lars said, this is what we need to do, and you shook your head no. So. Oh, um, <laughs> he was almost correct. He, you, you're not going to offer the ordinance. The offer of the ordinance is, is when you're, you're having final passage. So that would come at the second reading. So you just skip that part and move on to a motion to have it read in title only, uh, wave reading, have it read in title only, and then the next motion would be to advance the second reading. Um, and in this case, it wouldn't be the May 10th, it would be the May 17th Correct, uh, yeah. Board of Supervisors meeting. Yeah. So Welcome to our struggles, Lars. Well, far be it from me <laughs> to say what should be done anyway. So that's I was trying to be helpful. Yeah. Thank you. Rose oh, I, I was just going to mention the gleaners are already doing this work. Is so is are the gleaners engaged to continue with this program? Oh, absolutely. So it's yeah. just okay. They were on they were on the committee to to yeah. provide input. Um, you know, this is this is something that that no no county entity has been involved in, and that's uh, that's part of the um, well that, that that's why why the state put it as a requirement on the local jurisdictions to implement a a food recovery program. Uh, but absolutely, uh, uh, gleaners and and Redwood Empire Food Bank they are the only food recovery organizations in in the county. Uh, you know, as as uh, uh, Supervisor Scott indicated, there are other entities that receive their food from from those, but those are those are not the food recovery organizations. So absolutely, they they've been involved. Uh, they they are planning capacity uh, some some capacity expansion. They the gleaners. Um, um, so it's uh, you know there's there's some some good headway being made and and we have to report to the state on what that capacity what the capacity needs are and what the plans are to expand. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? And if not, uh, we'll open Supervisor Simon. Appreciate this uh, uh, coming forward, Lars. I know we talked about this months ago. So glad to see this uh, coming through and uh, getting to the final process here anyway. But um, as you said, I know there are a lot of organizations in every district that do it differently. I know uh, one of our larger uh, facilities down there, Hardisters, uh, works with the the senior center, uh, you know, and, and does a lot of good work in that area too. So glad to see this coming forward. So we're obviously in support of it. With that, I'll open to public input. Not see anyone in the chambers and I don't see any hands up online. So I'll bring it back to the board for action. And it looks like we're. Mr. Chair, I move to have this ordinance read in title only. Can I do this all in one motion? And no. no. Okay. With, With amendments. With amendments. Second. So I have a motion to end a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. So, Mr. Chair, I make a motion to move. We, we have to read it first. Oh, sorry. Yeah, she's got to read it. Sorry. Okay. Sorry, Vice Chair. So, it's an <laughs> ordinance adding Chapter 31 of the Lake County Code regarding the, uh, the County of Lake Edible Food Recovery Program. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I move to advance for the second reading to the May 17th, 2022 Board of Supervisors meeting. Second. So, I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much, Laura.